Today I'm hoping to give you some Necron conversion ideas as I convert my Canoptic Cloak Cryptek. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with all things Necrons and more then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay so today's Necron video is going to be a vlog of me doing my Canoptic Cloak conversion work. I'm going to run through the whole process from start to finish in hope that it gives you some Necron conversion ideas for when you do your conversions. Now of course most conversions, most kit bashing is reliant upon the bits that you've got in your bits box. Those bits can lead you in a direction for the actual conversion itself. What I'm hoping that you get from this video is my thought process on the conversion itself and how I adapted as I went along with the conversion. I really hope you liked the work that I did and that you enjoyed the video. Okay, so here is my original cryptic, which I built pretty much the same as the instructions say, with the exception of this hand. I'm not a huge fan of those two sort of fingers sort of pointing in the air, so I, I built it with the hand going downwards just to hide those two fingers a little bit. But it is an awesome, awesome model and I really like it. Just uh, spin it around so you can see how I painted him. It's got a purple cloak on the back. So now I'm going to build another one, but I want it to be slightly different to this one. I don't want it to look exactly the same. This is pretty much a single posed mini. As I said, the only things really you can sort of change is the angle of the staff and his hand. Now I've seen a few conversions around uh, already. Uh, mainly with this back section here, I've seen some with uh, extended sections, I think using Lich Guard Storm Shields. I've seen uh, some sort of wing ones coming out here, so it looks like he's got big wings. A few other bits and pieces. Obviously, I want my conversion to be unique as I can, but also I don't want it to be so far out there that it just doesn't look like a cryptic. I want it to fit the theme of the model. So, without any real ideas of what I wanted to do, I started by chopping and cleaning up the actual model, which is what I've done here. So I haven't built anything, I've literally just taken them off of the sprue and cleaned them up. And then I thought I would have a think about how this model works and what I could do with it. Conversions are normally done in the planning stages, more than anything, although obviously they do tend to change as they go along. Now, I've had a look in my bits box just to see what I've got, and as a Necron player, apart from a lot of the newer kits, to be honest with you, there's not too much choice, that you don't get too many bits. I mean, in the old days, you hardly got any bits at all. My first thought was, how am I going to change this arm here? Because, as I said, I don't particularly like it, and I think if you have the same arm on there, it's really going to look like the same model. So I did go through my bits box and find a few hand stroke arms. Sadly, most of them, that's the uh, standing cryptic one, uh, is a right arm, so that's no good. That is another cryptic right arm. I did find these though, so this is a heavy destroyer arm. The only issue that I've got is his hand is massive. So I don't think that's going to work too well. I've got this Wraith hand, which I think is probably going to work the best. That would look pretty cool. Uh, and I've got this one with a gun. Well, obviously the Cryptid doesn't really have a gun, so I don't think that's going to work. So at the moment I was thinking about that Wraith hand. So, moving on, another closer look at this model. And I was thinking about, obviously, the fact that it's floating and how does he float. I mean, looking at the model, you've got a piece of uh, vehicle which is holding up his little spine. And the spine is attached to this little spider. So, I don't think he has the ability to actually uh, hover. 
I think it's the spider which is hovering. And it was this point that I went to the fluff. So I went to the codex and I read the cryptic's fluff and about halfway down after explaining a few things it says a cryptic's power springs from this ignorance and from the army of canoptic spiders, wraiths and scarabs under his control. So I read that and it sprung to mind how about I maybe use a wraith of some description to help with the conversion because I knew I had some old metal wraiths which I don't really need. I've got 18 wraiths already so I had a look at my bits box and indeed I did have some old metal wraiths and I thought about the idea of using the bottom half of one of those old wraiths. Maybe have the little spider attached to it and then have the cryptic cloak just standing on the top. So that was one idea that I had. However, I continued reading the codex and it says this towards the end. It says, some cryptex utilize canoptic cloaks to soar above the fray. Each of these techno arcane shrouds is attached to a spider-like construct that generates a powerful anti-gravity pressor field, allowing its wearer to speed through the air. This item also has a remarkable secondary function able to stitch together a damaged necrodemus with its supple limbs and focused radiation beamers. So, after reading that, it's very clear that the actual Canoptic Cloak section is this back piece. I was wondering at one point whether it was the actual spider itself, but obviously he is attached to that with the cloak, so it's the cloak section and then the cryptic and the spider together. So I had another think about it. This wraith idea was potentially an option. However, I remembered something which I did a while ago. Now you may or may not remember of this guy here that I did. This is an old lord and I've got him on a canoptic spider or a tomb spider, the old unit. And I converted it up with some extra bits and pieces on there, changed the arms, uh, to make it look not like one of my tomb spiders, it looks like a different unit. And I use him as either a command barge or as a destroyer lord. Basically, he's just riding a tomb spider and I think he looks pretty cool. So, knowing that I had in my bits box an old tomb spider, I was thinking, well how about, rather than riding this spider here, I put him on one of these. I was thinking if I cut that bit of vehicle off of the spine and then cut off that section on the end I could potentially put a magnet on there and then stick a magnet just on that section at the back and then I can magnetise the cryptic up onto the back of this guy so it would be actually standing on there. That could be quite handy, it could match in to this model quite well when it's on the battlefield and it will make him look a bit different to this one. I could potentially still build this small spider, maybe have it on the base of this guy so it could be like the big daddy spider and that's his little baby and you could say that's his baby as well, how about that? <laughs> uh, so I had to rummage through my bits box to see how much of this tomb spider I actually had. I managed to find the head, I did consider using that head there just to make it look like that spider but I think it's a bit small so I didn't bother with that idea and my lord has a normal spider head anyway so I'm going to use the normal spider head and then for the arms I thought if I use wraith arms again I've got a couple of different choice options but then also again it will make it look like a HQ spider rather than an actual tomb spider which I have as a unit in my army. Now I have found a few extra bits which potentially I could use just to change up the spider as well, like I did on this one. I probably won't make it exactly the same, I'm not sure yet, but I'm figuring I might make it a little bit different because it's a different concept where this guy, the cryptic, is going to be effectively attached to this. Whereas this one, he's just standing on the top, riding it. 
So yeah, that was the idea. Now I still need to figure out how to change this model up a little bit more because yes, okay, it's going to look different because I've got a different spider at the bottom, but the actual cryptic himself is still gonna look the same. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really have any extra bits to be able to chop him up any more than he is because, as I said, it's a one pose mini, so there's not too much that I can do with his other features, uh, especially as I've got not many parts to change it up. And the cloak itself, I think I want to keep it the same because then it will be easily recognisable that it is a canoptic cloak and that's what I want on the table. So the main thing is going to be his arm and potentially his uh, staff of light. So what I was thinking, one way of maybe making this look totally different is if I have a two-handed staff of light because I came across some bits in my bits box. I have some Praetorian arms and whilst I don't have the front of this section, this is for the staff, what I was thinking was as it's got two hands is if I chop this staff of light around, put it onto here and make this weapon a two-handed weapon and then find the correct matching arms and then this canoptic cryptic can be holding a two-handed staff of light and I think that will really change the model up without chopping it up too much so that's going to be my plan I think a two-handed staff of light and then change the spider to this old school spider which I think will be pretty cool and also will match my guy here as well so that's what I'm going to attempt to do okay so I've stripped the tomb spider now got all the paint off I used my faithful bio strip 20 I love this stuff it stripped this in an hour it's not harmful to the skin it doesn't smell and it works really really well on both plastic and metal but a side note it doesn't work on fine cast so don't use that on fine cast but it's really awesome stuff so I stripped it and then I cleaned up all of the mold lines, filed it all down. Now as I was doing that, I was thinking about how maybe I could convert this spider a little, maybe to match in with this spider on the actual original model. So I was thinking how about I try to make it a little bit more flatter than the original design, so maybe have the legs rather than downwards like this maybe have the legs sort of coming up on both sides and then having them quite close to the ground I thought that would be pretty cool so I'm going to work on that but before I did that I was thinking I need to work out the angle that the cryptid's going to be on there so I've already gone in and I've put a magnet uh, just at the back there where the little spine joins and on the Cryptek uh, joining section, I've cut the end off and just filed it down. I've got a nice big flat round section, which is where I'm going to glue the magnet. Now to be fair, that big round section doesn't actually fit into the hole at the moment. So I'm gonna glue the magnet on and then I'm going to trim the excess plastic so that it does fit. Rather than cutting it on the thinner section, where the magnets would be overlapping the plastic. It's basically going to be more fragile that way. So I thought this was a good solution. So the whole of the magnet will be attached to plastic rather than overhanging. But before I glue the magnet on, because potentially I could change the angle of this cloak, I wanted to work on the actual spider itself and get the posing of the spider before I work out exactly where I want to put the magnet. So that's what I'm going to work on now. I'm going to work on the pose of the spider. Okay, so I've been working on the tomb spider. Now, if you've ever worked with metal, you will know that it's a one bend only chance. In other words, if you bend metal more than once, it just weakens and snaps. So I managed to bend them and only one leg snapped, which I was quite happy with, which was just this one here. I've gone in and I green stuffed it and re-glued it and I've actually put some green stuff and glue in the other joints as well just to make them stronger 
and what I did is I bent it so that the two outside legs are going forward as well as up. So that's how it's looking at the moment and I've been working on a base for it. Now I was thinking originally of a standard sort of flying base. Now this is obviously quite big compared to the little spider on here. However, I think the base makes it look even bigger, so I think I'd be better off using the original base size. Now I do have these bases here from some heavy destroyers that I got from eBay, which are the perfect size. Uh, now these are just basically MDF discs. I'm not a fan of the stuff which is on the top, so I attempted to get that off and I managed to do it and I've cut down the stem because I don't want the spider to be really high up in the air. I want him just to be sort of hovering just a little bit off of the ground. I might make that even uh, lower, I haven't decided yet. I have put a magnet on the base ready for the magnetising onto this stem. Now, because of the new pose that I've got, I've had a change of heart about what to do at the front of this spider. So originally I was going to use the claws from a wraith, but now I'm thinking no claws, just the head. In actual fact, this is the original head, which actually goes in this sort of low position. So I was thinking of maybe moving it up, but then I thought, hang on a minute, I've got one of the brand new uh, canoptic spider heads, or at least I think that's where it's from, might be from a wraith or I'm not really sure, but basically I was thinking if I put one of the newer heads on there it would match in to that spider a little bit more. It is a physically bigger head than the one on the original there, but I just think that might look a little bit better and then no extra limbs at the front, so it, it literally just matches that in terms of the design concept. So that's what I was thinking with the spider. So after that, I got working on the actual cryptic himself. Okay, so going back to the cryptic and something I forgot to say that I did earlier was I cut off the piece of terrain and I reshaped the back of the little coil there. I've now added a magnet onto the end and trimmed down the plastic like I was going to. And I've just attached the cloak itself. Now for painting purposes, I will leave the actual cryptic off of here because it's just easier to get behind and paint it. Got a little bit of blue tack there just to give me an idea of how he looks once he's obviously complete. So with that magnet all dried, I then went back to my tomb spider and magnetized it to find that although it sort of does stand in into position, it also rotates round it basically flops a little bit so I tried to work out what I could do to prevent it I took off the two little nodules on the side of here to see if that would help actually it made it worse I tried to reshape the back section slightly and that made it worse uh, I thought about maybe putting something over the top of it I've considered using the original spider section and maybe having something on the back there just to plug it in to prevent it from sort of flopping over. For now I've tried plan A which you can probably see already. I've basically put a load of green stuff in there. I wet this and then I pushed this in to make like a, a mould. As you can see it's slightly overhanging on the side of the spider there but I'm hoping when that's fully dry, I've only just done it, but that will actually stop it from rotating over. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to go to plan B and just think of something else. But I won't know until that's fully dry. I'm going to give that a good four hours before I check it. So in the meantime, I suppose the next thing for me to work on is going to be this guy's Staff of Light. Okay, so that has now dried and I've tested it and it's working a lot better better now so it's staying in that upright position. I'm thinking I may just add a little magnet at the bottom of that green stuff and at the bottom of this section just to really hold it into position. But I'll see how it goes when it's all built because obviously it's got more weight when it's fully built. Plus 
I've done the head of the spider. Now I did try that small spider head but it just looked a bit silly. It was just too small, didn't seem to match the model very well. So what I did is I went to the back of this head, just filed one of the little knob sections off that was sticking out because the head normally goes lower and then I put the head up where the knob section was and just stuck it on and I stuck it at a slight angle because I think I'm planning on having this just going upwards to one side I'm thinking if not on the flying stand maybe sort of over a rock or something we'll see the final pose will probably happen once I've got all of this built now as for the staff of light that is now complete However, I haven't quite glued it together because I want to show you what I've done. So I took the Praetorian arm and I basically cut off the two ends and with a one millimeter drill piece, a little hand drill, I drilled a hole into both sides. I then took the actual Staff of Light from the Cryptek and I cut the top and bottom off. And then I obviously squared that off and I drilled a little hole in both ends and I've put a little pin in there, that's just a paper clip. A little bit of green stuff in the hole first, pushed that in with some super glue, and that's all dried. So all I've got to do now is obviously super glue that into there, again with a little bit of green stuff. This staff works out slightly longer than the original. But that will be fine if I get it into the hole. There we go. Uh, but that will be fine. I also have the option to rotate this round as needed depending on the pose. And the fact that the actual spider is a bit bigger, I don't think it will make any difference that the staff is a bit bigger as well. Obviously I've got to glue that all together and of course I've got to try and match it up with the two arms. It's going to be tough. I think anyone who's built Praetorians knows it's hard to match up the arms and hands but it's got to be done. Okay, so that's the Cryptek all glued together. I did my usual trick. I put some green stuff in both of the shoulder joints here. I glued one hand onto the arm and then I pushed that into the green stuff with some super glue. Then I put the other arm into the green stuff with some super glue and then just matched it up to this section and then put some glue in there so it was all glued and let it dry for a good few hours. I've also put the head in there and I've put the head at a different angle to the original so that again it just changes the pose up. And to be fair, well that by itself is probably a good enough change to the original model without changing the spider. However of course I am changing the spider and I've done some more work on it so let's bring that in. Right, so at the front here, I decided to put this little cage section above the head, uh, basically matching it into this one here, although this does have a lower spine section. I couldn't put that on here because of course the head is raised up, but I think it matches in a little bit better. It makes it look like a HQ spider rather than a canoptic spider. I've also added an extra spine just on the back here. This is from a Praetorian kit and this little section which again I think I got from a Praetorian kit. Just to give it a little bit more detail here and also to help it look like the Cryptek is plugging into the spider. Now you may notice the green stuff has totally gone. So yeah let me tell you about that. Uh, so with the Cryptek built and the um, cloak attached with some blue tack, it was way too heavy and again it started just flopping around. So I drilled a little hole into the back section and put a 2mm magnet, but when I went to drill a hole into the actual spine of the Cryptek, well I could only get a 1mm hole in there because there just wasn't enough room. Um, a single 1mm magnet well, that wasn't holding. I then drilled another hole next to it and put two magnets together. That still didn't hold. And then I thought about the idea of maybe adding a little pin next to the magnets. And as I was attempting to do that, well, I got inspired and I thought, well, how about rather than having all these magnets and stuff, how about I just put almost like a pin idea onto the Cryptek? which is what I've done. So I've got some green stuff. 
I put that on the bottom and then I shaped it so that it goes into the slot. Of course I've now removed all of the green stuff and now when the magnet goes in that green stuff goes into the slot and it doesn't move, it doesn't move at all. So I solved the issue that I was having. I got a little bit frustrated but got a nice light bulb moment right at the end and that solved all the issues. Right, then it was time to work on the base. Now as you know, I was originally going to use this and put a little magnet onto it. However, I think I want the spider angled in this sort of position, angled in the opposite direction to the original miniature and with an angled heavy piece of metal, well, the magnet idea isn't going to work. Plus, to be honest with you, I'm not too happy about using this wooden disc. I like to have the original Games Workshop bases and I remembered I actually ordered some extra bases not that long ago, the right size. So, there is the base and as you can see I've put rocks on there. I've abandoned the stem idea in favour of rocks. So I've got these from my garden. To be fair, these were a bit flaky, these rocks, so I went in with some watered down PVA glue and I've covered the rocks and that stops them from flaking. And I've now got a pose. The good thing about this, I've got a nice big flat section. Well, pretty flat. I could potentially put some green stuff on here when it comes to gluing, but I glue it on after I've painted but effectively that is going to go right there, just put this down, it's going to go right there like that. So it's going to be angled to one side, his legs are going to be in the air, it's going to look like he's hovering. Right, now I'm going to attach the cryptic and you can have a final look. And there he is, all finished. Of course the spider's just blue tacked onto the rock and the cloak is blue tacked to the cryptic ready for painting but I'm really really happy how he's looking. I'm loving the spider on there angled but still hovering and I've managed to keep him about the same height as the original model. I think he looks different but I think he looks pretty cool but what do you think of him? Let me know in the comments box below. Now I've got a lot of Necron hobby stuff coming to the channel soon. I actually made a video right there about everything that I'm going to be working on. And here is another hobby related video I think you may like. Beam me up.